Support for Stepping Out comes in part from the Kristovich family in honor of Mary Lou and Bill Kristovich. be discussing the current New Orleans restaurant scene, ever-changing, and we'll even show you New York's current take on it. <laughs> I'm Peggy Scott Laborde, and welcome to Step It Out. Here we discuss food, arts, and entertainment on a weekly basis, but tonight, food, glorious food. Seated at our table tonight, Dr. Robson Lutz. Talk about right from the train, <laughs> practically, from New York. An internist and gourmet who writes about health issues for New Orleans Magazine. Welcome back, Thank Robson. You. Good to see you. Poppy Tucker, host of the radio program Louisiana Eats, airing twice weekly on WWNO Radio. Hello. Hi, Peg. Again. Good to see you. Helen Freud, it's been a while. Good to see her. Hi. Food writer for Gambit Weekly. Hello, Miss Helen. Hi. Hi. <laughs> and Ian McNulty, food writer for the New Orleans Advocate. All right. So hard to do so much, but we're going to give it a try. First up, the breakfast, Poppy. Well, shouldn't we start with breakfast? I <laughs> thought that was a good idea. And I have to tell you, traditionally, I haven't been much of a breakfast eater, but I am just so amazed by this breakfast phenomena that's definitely happening in New Orleans. The Ruby Slipper, kudos to them. Yes. How in the world can you have 10 locations and most of them here in New Orleans? I just find that incredible. And then the proliferation, toast. Who would think that little toast would end up with three restaurants? Their original, of course, Uptown, Mid-City, and now there's going to be a French toast on Decatur <laughs> Street. And then I love breakfast at Gracious Bakery. There's always something wonderful to eat there. And, you know, of course, that's another amazing expansion that we have watched as that wonderful Megan Rowan has taken her delicious pastry from Jefferson Davis Parkway to St. Charles Avenue, and most recently, Britannia, where breakfast is a real full-fledged event, and you can even have waffles, <laughs> and Bearcat Cafe, right near where your office right is. Right mm -hmm. half a block away. And are, are you a good cat or a bad cat? <laughs> <laughs> I hang out at Napoleon. Betsy's Pancake House for my breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> I had not changed in years. Well, Canal Street's my place for breakfast. Isn't that the thing, though, with breakfast in New Orleans? Like, it can never be too close. For as many restaurants as, as are opening up, uh, whenever people ask me about good places to eat, they're always hungry for more breakfast places. I think for, for all the places that Poppy just listed, and all of, those, all of those are new within the last, let's say, eight years, ten years maybe, there's, I still feel like people want more of them. They want them in their neighborhoods. This It just seemed like it was such an underserved niche in New Orleans. And the Waffle House on Canal Street on weekends, you can't get in there. Yeah, the places that are successful, you see them. They're packed through the door. And the more that you add, the more people want them. I mean, I think part of it is the tourist economy here, right? I mean, people roll out of bed on a, a Monday, Tuesday. Most of us are going to work. If you're here visiting, you're starting the day with brunch, you know? I mean, that's a big part of it. Absolutely. And brunch is a huge part of it with uh, the proliferation of build your own Bloody Mary bars. That's fascinating. <laughs> you know, we see that at Cafe at Chafalaya and the Palace Cafe and Lulu Distillery where it doesn't have to just be a Bloody Mary. There's all sorts of other wonderful juices and then brunch. Oh, I love the brunch at Palador 511. And I'm also really enamored of Paloma Cafe. I could have their churros with spiced chocolate sauce and their Revelator coffee every single day. <laughs> well, think about this, too. For all the chefs and restaurateurs we have around town, eventually you start to hear some of them think, you know, instead of being open till midnight and, you know, hanging out till 4 in the morning, maybe I'll just open a nice little breakfast and lunch <laughs> spot. So you, you, I think you do see sometimes chefs who are, are making a change in their career, they will transition over to breakfast and brunch. And you, I came back on the Crescent to New Orleans from New York, and the chef on the Crescent who lives here is saving his money to open one of these morning to noon places because he wants to spend time with his family. Uh, Imagine that, so that's revolutionary yeah, idea for the restaurant business. <laughs> <laughs> what a great point. Well, let's move to the quarter where we, of course, have some of our oldest restaurants, but there's lots of change going on there, yeah. too. I mean, I feel like the French Quarter has always been a place where tourists and locals have loved to go as a dining destination, but I think recently we've seen a lot of places that are opening where, especially with Toast and the Ruby Slipper, too, like, 
there's this push to be a neighborhood restaurant too. Um, I'm thinking of places like Longway Tavern, which recently opened. Places where maybe if you live in the quarter or you're a restaurant worker, hospitality worker, and you're getting off your shift and you want to go for a nightcap and a, a bite to eat, or if you just live in the quarter and you have a day off and you want to wander we and stop. We need moderately and, priced right, places. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, so Longway Tavern I think is really special. That's of course from the LeBlanc and Smith restaurant group. So they're no stranger to the quarter. They have Mobar, Sylvain, Barrel Proof over in the lower, like, lower Garden District. Um, but there you're going to get like classic cocktails. So uh, martinis, daiquiris, old fashions, white Russians. Um, <laughs> you know, and really good food too. Um, and then, of course, I also like Manolito, which recently opened over on, I think, Dumaine Street, uh, where you're going to find, like, really good Cuban classic frozen drinks um, and, like, really good traditional Cuban fare. And all and about the size of this table, too. Yeah, it's exactly. a tiny place. Like a jewel box. And I keep <laughs> thinking Ernest Hemingway is going to be there. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, very much. And then on yeah. Dumaine Street, there's E, which is a great breakfast restaurant. Oh, yeah, that's still there. That's problem, been around for a while. Yeah. My only problem is it doesn't open at 9 o'clock in the morning. I'm almost ready for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> The only problem is they don't serve mimosas. Well, so. Isn't it great to find these new places in the French Quarter next to the old places? I mean, they're all mm. they all share the same bones of these great old French Quarter buildings, and it's I always find it inspiring to see people doing really interesting things in them that that do taste modern, but but feel like they belong in the quarter too. And Robson, mm -hmm. of course, we have to have always a nod to the to the places that you love so much, like Galatoire's and Antoine's. I mean, those can't be beat. Huh? Absolutely. The, uh, if if you can hold off a little bit, you can get in Galatoire's about. 11 o'clock and their egg dishes are just phenomenal. You see, you don't think about that. That's a very good point. Absolutely. Egg sardou. Oh. Uh, oh. Terrific. Yes. Now, um, this is not a street normally that would have said she, all these restaurants, but Broad Street. Broad Street. I mean, we've had steak, you know, on North Broad, but we're talking South Broad. Here There's too. been a lot of change. I, I can't really think of any other part of town that's had as, as much change as quickly as that area down by Broad Street and Tulane, really between like the Lafitte Greenway and and over the over uh, the interstate over into the Broadmoor section there, uh, that section has been roiling with change and a lot of it's been driven by restaurants and bars and coffee shops, uh, and it's a fascinating area for me. I mean, it feels like I don't know. It feels like a little bit like our own little Los Angeles around there. You know, it's it's all these things kind of pushed together and this big road that runs through it all, and the charm of it is the diversity of it. From a, you know, there's a, a really good taco truck parked on the corner of uh, Broad and Canal all the time, but now there's like really inventive food cropping up there. Margie's Grill comes to mind. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a place that's, I know, super popular with chefs love it, right? This is one of the places that chefs want to go on their downtime. Well, me too. I mean, it's <laughs> it's grilled meats and fresh vegetables and Asian touch, but different and modern. And you're seeing more of that fill in along... Um, what, along Bank Street, Echo's Pizza oh, came in goodness. recently. Yeah. A great little place called Pharmacy, one of the best burgers in town right now, in my opinion. Uh, and it, it's, it's, there's, there's a lot more room for stuff to come in there, too. I think as, as restaurateurs and chefs get a little more inventive, a little more creative with how they're going to do their business, that's going to be still be an affordable area for them to set up new concepts. Yeah. At the beginning of Napoleon, you've got, was it Pablo Real? Pablo Real. Awesome. Mm. Mexican yeah. restaurant. That that's great. very good. And watch this little corner. They're calling it the Maker's Mile, but it's this collection of you know artisan and craft makers of food and drink. They're all really clustered together there by, by Broad and Washington. Washington. There's a brewery, Wayward Owl. There's a cidery, you know, a cider pub where they make the cider right cidery. there, Broad Street I Cider. Like yeah, yeah Pieties and Dyer Chocolate. Yeah, yeah, Rolls on Rum. I mean, it, there's a lot. And the bakery mm. right there, it's a neat little area. Coffee science. <laughs> if I really need to pick shop. me up, there's nothing quite like a Venetian cream. Mm. <laughs> That's the <laughs> wickedest thing. And of course, we can't forget um, North Broad with Crescent City Steakhouse. Oh, yeah. The, the, it runs right through into Gentilly. Uh, yeah, you know, that's what I say. You get in your car, you start driving. Even if you weren't hungry for something in particular, you're gonna be, you're gonna have that craving pretty soon because you're gonna see so many great options through there, including Vegan Soul. Right across yeah, yeah. from our famous steakhouse, Crescent City Steakhouse, there's Sweet Soul Love, which is a soul restaurant, yeah. a little lunch counter kind of thing, a meat and three style, except no meat. It's vegan. <laughs> it's all vegan and it's delicious. Well, we'll 
we'll take a, just a brief departure from New Orleans for a moment and talk about New York. What a time you had. This is your pilgrimage, your, your culinary pilgrimage, sir? That's right. August, I like that. to spend some time up in New York, and it was hard to uh, forget about New Orleans up there this month. Uh, right on uh, 57th Street and 5th Avenue, all the windows of Berghoff have New Orleans themes on them. I understand uh, that was a project between the city of New Orleans and um, a lot of themes in those windows, huh? Exactly, exactly. But one of, uh, one, one of the windows, I think we have a, th th this is a huge crawfish, <laughs> it's the biggest crawfish <laughs> I've ever seen, right on 5th Avenue and one of the most prestigious stores in, 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 in New York. And uh, they actually had uh, 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 some other carnival theme windows and everything. Uh, they, they're really off on their dates, but uh, I, I guess we appreciate everything anyway. I mean, crawfish in August, I thought, gosh, uh, where are you going to find that? Well, you just keep going down Fifth Avenue long and <laughs> far enough, and you come into a restaurant called The Boil, and The Boil has crawfish. They have I looked in the window first, I couldn't believe it. People were sitting in there <laughs> with surgical gloves on. Oh, this is it, hilarious. this is the ball. <laughs> sitting in there eating crawfish. Aww. So, uh, the doctor, I, I, are they I, eating I, the crawfish or examining it? No, they were eating. And, 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 and I, I checked into this because I want to know where these, these crawfish came from. There I am. <laughs> give me a crab neck. And where so is this crawfish? This, this, this is the ball, and, and uh, uh, they have two locations. One mm -hmm. is in Greenwich Village, and one is on the Lower East Side. Okay. But uh, the, the interesting thing about it is they swear their crawfish are from Louisiana, from New Orleans. Oh. So, uh, I, I said, well, that's wonderful because we can't get crawfish down in New Orleans. <laughs> uh, I said, uh, are they fresh? Absolutely, they're fresh. I said, well, bring one. I want to see it. They said, uh, 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 I don't know if the chef will let me. I said, go tell that chef if he can show me a live crawfish, I'll give him a $100 tip. Well, she came back and said, uh, he said he would like to, but the Board of Health doesn't allow it because oh. they're dangerous. They can hurt people. <laughs> so, <laughs> so somebody's selling them a lot of frozen crawfish. But uh, they weren't all that bad for Yankee crawfish. You um, know. Nicely, appropriately spiced? Yes, yes, okay. yes. Seventeen dollars a pound. I think we had a picture yeah. of, of, of that on there. Seventeen dollars a pound. Seventeen dollars a pound. Now that's that's the uh -huh. August price. I said, well, how much are they like in February? So, oh, they're always seventeen dollars a pound. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, <laughs> so no seasonal away. pricing wow. there. So, and that's and that's the door. That's the it? door. That's 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 the door to the ball. Now you also had a really cool. Sazerac that you wanted to show us, huh? That's right, and uh, <laughs> I've, I've got to give credit also to my photographer up there, John Barren of Midnight uh, oh, of, of course. Uh, Garden of Good and Evil. And we had Guitar. lunch here when we actually, I mean, we had dinner here and actually had crawfish for dessert. <laughs> but but Tart is a uh, is a new restaurant up uh, up there in Lower Manhattan that Molly Weissmeyer, who was the former uh, uh, wine uh, director at uh, Revolution, put me on to. Oh wow! And, and that's I, I go in and I see yeah. Sazerac on the menu. I, I saw it on several menus in New York, and apparently because of the tales of the cocktail with everybody coming mm -hmm. down here, it's in all, it's on all the menus in New oh, York of, of the specialty drink uh, menus, and and the, they're, they're actually good. This one, th this one at Batard, it was served perfect. It uh, had a little bit of lemon peel in it, just a sliver of ice. You know, the last one I got at Galatoire's came out with ice all packed in it. That ain't a Sazerac. Uh, so they're out doing Galatoire's in New York right now. <laughs> <laughs> Sazerac. Now, Doc, anyone you wearing gloves to handle those Sazeracs up there? They trust a bare hand. So, only uh, gloves in <laughs> only gloves in the crawfish restaurant. Right. <laughs> For our one last New York show, uh, show and tell, um, a noted local artist, Ashley Long. Sure was also uh, celebrated. They actually had what, like a pop-up cafe with her her interior right. design. Right, her her, That's great. Uh, her. She actually did the menu for about a two uh, two week run up there. Unfortunately, uh -huh. I missed that by about two days. But I had a good lobster salad up in this Look same area. Look at her decorations. Area. Mm -hmm. you but know. Uh, she certainly yeah. turned their uh, wow. uh, a restaurant on end up there, and it got yeah. a lot of. And she even got a window comments. too. So yes. pretty impressive, you know. But thank you, for Robson, for that. Which the Burgoff people are supposed to. Thank <laughs> you.
specify that uh, this window is separate from the other one. Right, right, right. And, right. <laughs> all, all the that. emails the that went Orleans. back and forth to get those pictures. <laughs> we appreciate their cooperation. So now, though, it's time to talk about Latin restaurants and the news there, right, Helen? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I think, you know, the last couple of years, and we've talked about it on this show, too, we've got this, like, really great selection of Mexican restaurants now, right? Like New, Orleans, New Wave, Turquerias, yeah. um, the new place, Socolo, that's opening up on Metairie Road, right, mm -hmm. that's doing um, kind of more of a regional take on Mexican cuisine. So that's all really fun, but I think something, we kind of forget sometimes that we also have this, like, wealth of Central American food, too. Um, and we've seen that on, like, Williams Boulevard and Kenner, the outskirts, some parts of Metairie. But I've been spending a lot of time at these two markets on the West Bank and Jefferson Parish. Uh, they're called Las Pulgas, which means the fleas in Spanish. <laughs> um, and they're just, they're amazing. It's this collection, kind of similar in the way to St. Rock Market or Auction House. You have a bunch of different vendors, and they pay kind of a, a day or a week rate. Mm. Um, they're only open on the weekends. Um, and then they, you know, you can find Dominican, uh, Venezuelan, Colombian, Honduran, uh, Guatemalan, you know, just you name you it. Roasted guinea yeah. pig? Mm. Yeah, not that I know of, but that, <laughs> that's my favorite South American. There's some goat, so oh, you never know. Might Such be off the menu. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, Helen, you did a masterful job of covering those uh, recently in the Gambit, oh, thank you. and yeah, those places are so exciting. It's so exciting to see these places that are obviously homegrown right here in our own backyard, but. Yeah people bringing their own food to the fore of, of, of New Orleans. Those and places are so much fun, so vibrant outside. And, and Hit City, of course, is the home to many of those restaurants as well, isn't it? You know? well, and the ideal market. Mm -hmm. uh, well, again, on Broad Street. Oh, on Broad, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's a wonderful question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and let's talk about sort of uh, old restaurants, you know, new restaurants that take some reinvention. Huh? You know, Peggy, uh, it's been so many and years since Katrina some. that, yeah. you know, it's, sometimes it seems like it's a distant memory over the times it seems like it was yesterday. Well, in the restaurant world, that that can that can that can cut both ways. And I've learned over the last few years, you can never count an old restaurant out. The last few years, we've seen some restaurants come back that that looked like they were never coming back. Right in 2017, we had Dunbar's return, oh. you know, the 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 pride of Ferret Street pre Katrina. Yeah. Now it's on Earhart Boulevard, Black Creole cooking at its best. Uh, that same year, Gabrielle came back. You know, mm. a acclaimed fine dining restaurant before Katrina. Now it's over on Orleans Avenue near Dickey Chase. Uh, just showing how 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 enduring the, those great Louisiana flavors are. Well, this year, Barrows Shady Inn, uh, the same family, catfish, same catfish Ooh. recipe, now called Barrows Catfish, also on Earhart, very close to Dunbar's, as it happens. Uh, and you know, all over the city, really, you've seen some of these returns. It really, uh, you know, if it happened a year after Katrina, three years after Katrina. 10, 12, 13 years after Katrina now. Uh, it just always fills my heart with gratitude that some of these things could, could, could finally come back and that people remember that new, when New Orleans hears about these things, they flock to them because they, they still remember what it was. And even if they were too young, they heard the stories from their, their people yeah. about it. Uh, another great example of that is Charlie's Steakhouse. Oh, this yeah. year marks 10 years since it reopened after Katrina. It spent three years closed. I mean, a lot of people would have thought it's not coming back. It took a, a new owner to reinvigorate it, rebuild it. Uh, but I think they've done a great job of, of putting the spirit of Charlie's back into it for a new era. Well, thank God. God and Ralph Brennan that we still have Brennans. Right. Yes. I mean, yes, my goodness. Good Remember, that was hair raising. I didn't care yeah. for that. And then Napoleon <laughs> House, of course, sort of reinvigorated. Yeah. Um, you know, it, by Ralph Brennan too. You know, New Orleans is a, is a city that has a reputation. Oh, they don't like change. Things always stay the same there. Well, you know, some places uh, they've got they. It's like seeing an overture. You don't want it to change too much. You want to come back to a, a repeat performance of what you already know is great. But this city does change a lot, one way or the other. And, uh, you know, you can either roll with those changes and evolve with them, or you can fall by the wayside. So, you know, I, th I, th I think we're having a moment right now where New Orleans is embracing change while preserving the roots and the tradition. I think that's a really exciting time for people who love food here. You know, um, Ian, still in Mid-City here, um, Outgrowths, you have Namese, but now you've got the Boyle House on Magazine. Right. And expand on that a little bit. Uh, yeah. So I, I think actually in some of the doctor's uh, photos from New York, we saw some of that <laughs> Vietnamese style crawfish with the garlic butter sauce in it tossed in the bags right, there. Right. People right. Going it's after. a little greasy. Yeah. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. the garlic butter and the sauces on those. Well, that's that's that that Viet Cajun crawfish they sometimes call it. <laughs> the Vietnamese influence on the Cajun crawfish. Uh -huh. Super popular in Houston. That's sort of the 
the spiritual home of that stuff. Well, it's come boomeranging back to the crawfish heartland of Louisiana in a big way and picked up at a few places around town. I will say that's a controversial style of doing crawfish <laughs> in New Orleans. I know people who do not like it. It's extremely popular in the national media, but for people raised on crawfish, it's very different. Mm. It's <laughs> much more expensive and it's much heavier and uh, not everybody likes it. I love it. It's not going to be my bread and butter when it comes to crawfish season, but I do like to, to mix it up with that stuff a little bit. So, so we, go ahead. Oh, go sure. Ahead. No, it's been interesting to see it emerge at, at some of these Vietnamese-run seafood restaurants and seafood shops. Boil that you mentioned, Uptown of Magazine Street is a great example over in the West Bank, Big Easy Seafood. I just hope we don't lose our crawfish by getting priced out, uh, sort of like uh, with, with the crabs, because even uh, New York Times a couple of weeks ago, there was a crawfish restaurant uh, inter uh, reviewed by... Uh, by Pete Wells and they gave it two stars. Yeah, if it starts getting so popular that the, the trucks start pulling up at the docks and hauling all that stuff up to New York for a higher price like they and do exactly. the, the poor shrimpers, though, on the other yeah, extreme, that's, that's an issue. Right. I know. The shrimp is such a great uh. regional pleasure of, of Louisiana. I really encourage people to, you know, next time you're thinking you miss a crawfish boil, have a shrimp boil. Buy some local <laughs> shrimp and cook it up and get some beer. Local, and, local shrimp. Local, local shrimp. shrimp, yes. But, you know, to everything is seasoned, but we really it kind of sometimes end up ending up ignoring that. You know, there's sh things should be seasonal. Absolutely. Absolutely. Seasonal and regional. You know, we, we can cluck at the, the, the Northeasterners for charging so much for crawfish and all that. And I guarantee you, anyone from the Northeast who comes down here and looks at what they call lobster rolls at trendy restaurants in New Orleans would hold their nose up and laugh, too. It's, <laughs> it's, there's nothing like getting mm -hmm. the true specialty in its home, its home turf. And that's why we're so lucky to live in New Orleans, because so many of those great specialties are here. Yeah. Well, now it is time, though, for some, some bites, some quick bites. We'll start with Poppy. I am amazed by all of the bites of charcuterie that are appearing all over town. Everybody's making it in-house, but I have to say, I love a, a piece of meat in Mid-City. Oh, that yes. is one of my favorite new places. And check that place out because their fixtures, their lighting fixtures, all of this has to do with uh, old cooking utensils. Meat grinders. What a good it's idea. It's adorable and it's delicious. It's right past Nia. I guess Nia's, Nia's. Uh -huh. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Uh, ah, incredible. Robson. Pear Dime Gardens, a Jamaican festival coming up in early September. Don't miss it. You got to get a ticket, check out their website, paradigmegardensnola.com. <laughs> you know, um, I, I'm just looking at you because I, I know you love the quarter so much, I'm thinking about effervescence. That is a place we haven't had a chance to talk about. That continues on, doesn't oh, it? Oh, it's, it's Lots delightful. Of bubbly. That's the life. The only problem is they close two nights out of the week. <laughs> <laughs> we know where he likes. Well, you have to switch to, to still wine for those nights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Take a new look at the New Orleans waterfront, the lakefront up there. The old West End yes. is the new West End again. Uh, some interesting changes up there. Felix's is now on the lakefront. Oh, that's right. The inside yeah. outdoor oyster bar. Terrific addition across, right across the canal. Station 6 has been doing fantastic. And Lakeview Harbor, Lake, a Lakeview yeah. fixture for a long time in Harrison. Now they're near the harbor and yeah. the lake <laughs> right there uh, uh, right across from Russell's Marina Grill. So there's a lot of interesting stuff happening by the lake. And Harrison. Harrison. Yes. That's a whole other renaissance. It, it's huh? as if restaurateurs have finally realized that Lakeview is filled with people who love to dine out, who have kids, and who don't want to drive across town to do it. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot more turning up in the backyard of Lakeview, which is great for the well, young families. And, and there. Scott um, from Katie's has Francesca's yes. now. Francesca's mm -hmm. brought back the moon. We were talking about Lost New Orleans restaurants that are back. Well, the moon, of course, the specialty of Charlie's Delicatessen pre Katrina, muffalata sized monster of a deli sandwich. That's back at Francesca's. And uh, it's the same. Same address as before. This is not Charlie's, but it is the same address, same sandwich. I'm pretty happy to have that one. And Cava, Cava's great. Oh, Cava again, of course. It's uh, they, the, that's fine dining in Lakeview right there, and that guy's got a. Uh, Danny, of course, Danny Milan's got a lot Absolutely. of plans in the moves. Yeah. Also, I'm really big into atmosphere and, I, and of course, quality, too, but the steak knife. Oh. I really like the steak knife. Old, it's very homey. Yes, old school, great New Orleans and steak knife. And Mondo, Mondo excuse Mondo. me. Mondo across the street. Susan I mean, was a big pioneer on, on Harrison. Yes, she certainly was. She, she certainly started was. a big thing. Yeah. Helen. Bites. Um, well, I think that I'm always like surprised that poke has taken off the way that it has so quickly. I mean, it feels like every restaurant is now offering some sort of version of it. And of course, there are places that specialize in it. Um, I like Poke Chan on uh, St. Cloud That's Avenue. Oh. And then Lemon Shark Poke, which just opened, is like on Magazine Street, kind of near. Um, 
kind of near Coquette, up like around there. Um, it's a, uh, they've got like, what they're saying is they're doing sustainably caught fish, which I don't think any of the other places really advertise. So whether they do or they don't, I like going there because it makes me feel that like I'm doing something good. <laughs> and Ian, there's also this burgeoning uh, restaurant scene on St. Claude. I mean, certainly anchored by St. Rock, but you've got these little places. Well, that's the, that's the thing, Peggy. I mean, and, and any of us who, who follow food or who, who dine out avidly around New Orleans, the areas that used to be just, you know, interesting neighborhoods, Deserts, but not a lot to yeah. eat. Yeah, gosh, they're, they're, they've turned into these different restaurant rows. We talked about Broad Street earlier, St. Claude Avenue. You're certainly right. You drive down that street, and, you know, for someone like me following the scene, you can, you can just look through the windows and see, what, <laughs> is that a bar taking shape? Is that a yeah. restaurant hood I see? What's next? What's but next? But one thing about all those St. Claude restaurants is the air conditioning systems all week. <laughs> Even <laughs> Siberia. <laughs> You're going to be hot in there in the summer. Fall in winter's the time for St. Claude. <laughs> In Siberia, whoever. I know, really. <laughs> and we, of course, we uh, we have to definitely mention Nina Compton and oh. her coming to New Orleans, and then now not one but two restaurants, huh? And yeah. a James Beard Award. And a James mm -hmm. Beard Award. She's a great example of uh, somebody of the next generation coming into New Orleans, uh, not coming in here to conquer it, but to be part of the scene. And uh, this, the, the restaurant community has embraced her back, and she's become a star of New Orleans cuisine. I mean, a lot of our, <laughs> a lot of our. Uh, a lot of our talent here is homegrown. Others are attracted here because of the restaurant culture that we have, because of the restaurant community that we have. That's one of the. But compare Le Pen and now her latest. Yeah, by order American Bistro, they're getting uh, the sort of uh, attention nationally that uh, is extremely good for them, of course, but also I think good for the city because it, uh, you know, it, it shows a modern view of, of New, what, what the New Orleans restaurant mm -hmm. scene is, and uh, they're doing great with it. Well, what I think about Bywater, it used to be a food desert, and it was sort of like you know uh, with the joint. Bywater barbecue, and that was kind of it. Sure. No more, huh? Oh, yeah. Well, it's be careful what you wish for because yeah. <laughs> it can be an embarrassment of riches sometimes. And, you know, areas that were uh, that were once, uh, you know, mo mainly known for their corner bars are now known for these hip restaurants. Yeah, it, it, it creates a little dissonance, too. People who have lived in these neighborhoods a long time sometimes look down their street and wonder <laughs> where they are all of a sudden. Uh, but that's New Orleans these days. I mean, all over town, things are, are changing, and, uh, you know, the food and drink scene is leading the way. And you still got those corner bars like uh, what Vaughn's and BJ's and you oh, know, yeah, Camp. essential of course. And up, uptown too, of course, yeah. all of those. Who but. would ever think that the Circle Grocery would have a cutting edge poor boy place? There is a place <laughs> called Rollin' Rock where they're serving vegan and vegetarian poor boys, but they call them rich girls. Now that, and that's at the Circle Grocery. I, I, I what, what neighborhood is that? Grocery. I love the Circle Grocery. And they did an incredible, now that's one you never thought was going to come back. No. I know there was such effort and wishing it open, but it finally did happen. That's mm -hmm. a great example, too. Food well, landmark. thank you all very much. This has gone way too fast. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, information on all the restaurants that we discussed will be found at wyes.org. Just click on the tab for our Stepping Out calendar, and it'll be right there. Thank you so much for watching, and good night.